Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the History Cloak channel. I'm Mr. McGee. Now, I've been away for a bit. I was supposed to film one more video, but I came down with food poisoning right around the end of May. That was then followed by vacation, which I am not sorry for. Glacier National Park was beautiful. I would recommend visiting it if you ever get the chance. Ah, say money feek. After that, I had a bunch of other things I needed to do, but I am back and we are now ready for the Hamas episode. Now, in this episode, we're going to take a look at the organization Hamas. Why was it founded? What are its goals? How does it seek to accomplish its goals? Those are the things we're going to take a look at on this episode. So ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. Well, first off, before we start talking about Hamas, we need to know that the word Hamas is an Arabic acronym. It means Harakat al mukawama al Islamiyah. By the way, I apologize to all Arabic speakers, I'm pretty sure I butchered that, but Hamas is the acronym for that phrase, and that phrase means the Islamic Resistance Movement. So when you hear Islamic Resistance Movement, that is going to refer to Hamas. So that's important for us to know. Also what's important for us to know is the word Islamic in Islamic Resistance Movement. If you remember in an earlier video, I told you guys that the whole battle between Israel and the Arab countries around it had less to do with dispute over who owns what land and more to do with religion. At least we should say religion on the part of the Arabs. Islam, of course, being that religion. So Hamas is the Islamic resistance movement. So you know that the main motivation for them is going to be religious in nature. And that's going to be important for us as we take a look at Hamas. Now, Hamas is going to be created around 1978. It's going to pull members from the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, and from the Muslim Brotherhood. It's going to pull members from that group and kind of form its own group. Now, Hamas will start out kind of as a social welfare group for Palestinian Arabs in the Gaza Strip. A lot of its influence at the time would be through the mosque system throughout the Gaza Strip. That is going to be its home. After all, again, Hamas is going to focus on the religion of Islam. So kind of makes sense that it would work through the mosques. Now, if members of Hamas are being pulled from the Muslim Brotherhood and the PLO, that's probably something to take a look at because by the time we get to the 1970s, the Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist organization. If we take a look at the PLO under Yasser Arafat, the PLO is a terrorist organization. If you're pulling from those two groups, that kind of tells you a direction that Hamas could possibly go. Now in 1988, 10 years after Hamas became a registered social welfare group, they released their Islamic Covenant. Think of it like a charter or a founding document of the organization. And this Islamic covenant of Hamas spells out who Hamas is, what its goals are, and how it hopes to achieve its goals. And it gives us Hamas's worldview. How does it view the globe? How does it view the planet? How does it view the people on the planet? All of that's gonna be very important to understanding Hamas. So we're gonna take a look at the Islamic covenant. now. There are 36 articles in the covenant. Think of an article as a paragraph that is focusing on a specific topic. Now, we are not, for the sake of this video, gonna go through all 36 articles, but we are going to touch on a few of the articles so we can get an idea of who Hamas is. If you think about it, if we have this conflict that's going on between Israel and Hamas, We've already taken a look at Israel. We've seen how Israel was created. We kind of have an idea about Israel's motivations. Well, again, if we're going to understand the conflict, we also need to take a look at Hamas and understand Hamas's motivations. Understanding that gives us a better picture of what is going on in Israel and the Gaza Strip and also what might need to be done in order to achieve peace, if peace is even possible. So without further ado, let's take a look at the Islamic Covenant of Hamas. By the way, I will link the entire Islamic Covenant in the show notes below for you to read. I think it's a good read, again, so that you can understand what is the underlying motivation of Hamas. So let's take a look at it. Before we get to the articles in the Islamic Covenant of Hamas, let's start with their introduction. In their introduction, they state the following. This covenant of the Islamic resistance movement, Hamas, clarifies its picture, reveals its identity, 
outlines its stand, explains its aims, speaks about its hopes, and calls for its support, adoption, and joining its ranks. Our struggle against the Jews is very great and very serious. It needs all sincere efforts. It is a step that inevitably should be followed by other steps. The movement is but one squadron that should be supported by more and more squadrons from this vast Arab and Islamic world until the enemy is vanquished and Allah's victory is realized. In Hamas's introduction, they make it very clear that their struggle is against the Jews and their goal is to rally not just the people in their organization, but all Arabs, all Muslims around the world in this struggle. So again, our goal in reading the Islamic Covenant is to make sure that we know what are Hamas's goals, what are their motivations, and how do they want to achieve those goals. By the way, with any of the articles in the Islamic Covenant of Hamas and the introduction that we just read, I'm going to be reading a section of the introduction. So there's more to the introduction, but I'm reading a particular section that I think kind of hits on the key points of goal, motivation, and how is that goal achieved. So without further ado, let's take a look at Article 1. Article 1 is very short, so we're going to read the whole thing. It states, the Islamic resistance movement, the movement's program is Islam. From it, it draws its ideas, ways of thinking and understanding of the universe, life, and man. It resorts to it for judgment in all its conduct, and it is inspired by it for guidance of its steps. Again, reading Article 1 just helps us to make sure that we realize that Islam, the religion, is the driving force for Hamas. Now we're going to jump down to Article 7. Article 7 reads as follows. As a result of the fact that those Muslims who adhere to the ways of the Islamic resistance movement spread all over the world, by the way, the Islamic resistance movement means Hamas, rally support for it and its stands, strive towards enhancing its struggle, the movement is a universal one. It is well equipped for that because of the clarity of its ideology, the nobility of its aim, and the loftiness of its objectives. The Islamic resistance movement is one of the links in the chain of the struggle against the Zionist invaders, Zionist referring to the Jews. It goes back to 1939, to the emergence of the martyr Is al-Din al qassam and his brethren the fighters, members of Muslim Brotherhood. It goes on to reach out and become one with another chain that includes the struggle of the Palestinians and Muslim Brotherhood in the 1948 war, that would be Israel's War of Independence, and the Jihad operations of the Muslim Brotherhood in 1968 and after. Moreover, if the links have been distant from each other, and if obstacles, placed by those who are the lackeys of Zionism, in the way of the fighters obstructed the continuation of the struggle, the Islamic resistance movement aspires to the realization of Allah's promise, no matter how long that should take. The Prophet, Allah bless him and grant him salvation, has said, The day of judgment will not come about until Muslims fight the Jews, killing the Jews, when the Jew will hide behind stones and trees. The stones and trees will say, O oh Muslims, O oh Abdullah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Only the Garkid tree, evidently a certain kind of tree, would not do that because it is one of the trees of the Jews. So by the way, you notice that Article 7 mentioned the lackeys of Zionism? Well, lackey is a negative term that means someone who will just do whatever their master tells them to do. So in other words, what they're saying is you have Zionism, referring to the Jews, and you have their lackeys. So think of countries like the U.S. or England who are allied with Israel. Hamas would see those as the lackeys of Zionism. Now, did you guys notice the quote at the end from Sahih Muslim and Sahih al-Bukhari? I actually mentioned that quote in a video a while back explaining that for Islam, the destruction of the Jews marks the end of the world, and that can't happen until the Jews are destroyed. And this is mentioned in Islam's most trusted sources. Well, Hamas quotes those trusted sources, and you can tell that for Hamas, their view is the destruction of the Jews, and that the end of the world cannot be achieved until that happens, and that that is what Allah has promised them. So, good again to know what are the motivations of Hamas, the organization. Let's drop down to Article 11. In it, Article 11 states, The Islamic resistance movement, Hamas, believes that the land of Palestine is an Islamic waqf. A waqf is an endowment, kind of like a gift, an inheritance. Consecrate it for future Muslim generations until Judgment Day. 
It or any part of it should not be squandered. It or any part of it should not be given up. Neither a single Arab country nor all Arab countries, neither any king or president nor all the kings and presidents, neither any organization nor all of them, be they Palestinian or Arab, possess the right to do that. This is the law governing the land of Palestine in the Islamic Sharia law, and the same goes for any land the Muslims have conquered by force, because during the times of Islamic conquests, the Muslims consecrated these lands to Muslim generations till the Day of Judgment. Article 11 is really important, because Hamas is saying that any land conquered by the Muslim armies of the past belong to Islam for eternity. So of course Hamas believes that the Jews cannot be in the land of Palestine because the Muslims conquered that land in the past. Now I also want you to think about this. Because of Hamas's statement, that actually not only affects their view of Palestine, that affects their view of, say, Portugal, Spain, and France. Because if you look at history, the Muslim armies conquered North Africa, but they also conquered Portugal, Spain, and France before they were finally driven out by a man named Charles Martel. This would be during what we'd call the Middle Ages. They view those lands as Muslim lands that need to be reconquered. You can also look at the fact that the Ottoman Empire ruled parts of Southeast Europe. So the Balkans, you think about Albania, North Macedonia, Croatia, Kosovo, countries like that. Hamas views those lands as Muslim lands. Any lands that have been conquered actually belong to Islam and should be taken back. So for Hamas, the battle against the Jews has a particular meaning because they believe that the Jews have to be killed before Judgment Day can come. But they also view other lands as well as lands that need to be taken. So for Hamas, there's a global outlook, not just this particular issue of the land of Palestine. Now let's go to Article 13 and see how Hamas views peace conferences and negotiations. Initiatives and so-called peaceful solutions in international conferences are in contradiction to the principles of the Islamic resistance movement, meaning Hamas. Now and then the call goes out for the convening of an international conference to look for ways of solving the Palestinian question. There is no solution for the Palestinian question except through jihad. Jihad is holy war. Initiatives, proposals, and international conferences are all a waste of time and vain endeavors. So for Hamas, the only solution is violence. They want to remove the Jews from the land of Palestine. They believe that all Jews have to be killed in order for Judgment Day to happen. And for them, the only route is violence. Not negotiation, not peace conferences. In fact, they look down on it. The only solution for them is holy war, is violence against the Jews. Now, in case you're wondering, we have two articles to go. Let's take a look at Article 15. Now, Article 15 states, In the face of the Jews' usurpation of Palestine, it is compulsory that the banner of jihad be raised. To do this requires the diffusion of Islamic consciousness among the masses, both on the regional, Arab, and Islamic levels. It is necessary to instill the spirit of jihad in the hearts of the nation so that they would confront the enemies and join the ranks of the fighters. It is necessary that scientists, educators and teachers, information and media people, as well as the educated masses, especially the youth and sheikhs of the Islamic movements, should take part in the operation of awakening the masses. It is important that basic changes be made in the school curriculum to cleanse it of the traces of ideological invasion that affected it as a result of the Orientalists and missionaries who infiltrated the region following the defeat of the Crusaders at the hands of Salah el -Adin. Saladin. So Hamas sees their war on a regional level, on an Arab level, and on an Islamic level. Remember I talked about they would view Portugal, Spain, and France as lands that need to be reconquered. They have a global vision, not just the regional Israel versus Hamas, Gaza Strip, Palestine. They have a global vision. In order to accomplish their global vision, they believe it is important to educate the masses through the various means of communication. By the way, did you notice 
They mentioned school curriculum and cleansing it. That would explain why after the attacks on October 7th, we had video coming out of the Gaza Strip showing elementary school children singing songs and reciting pledges to kill Jews. They would be doing this because Hamas is teaching those kids their curriculum. And of course, their curriculum would also include defeating the Jews. Last but not least, Article 32. Article 32 focuses on what Hamas views as their globe-wide struggle. So in it, it reads, World Zionism, together with imperialistic powers, try through a studied plan and an intelligent strategy to remove one Arab state after another from the circle of struggle against Zionism. Again, Zionism would be referring to the Jews, in order to have it finally face the Palestinian people only. Egypt was, to a great extent, removed from the circle of the struggle through the treacherous Camp David Agreement. If you remember the Camp David Agreement, Egypt had to recognize Israel's right to exist, and in return, Israel gave Egypt the Sinai Peninsula back. They are trying to draw other Arab countries into similar agreements and to bring them outside the circle of struggle. The Islamic resistance movement calls on Arab and Islamic nations to take up the line of serious and persevering action to prevent the success of this horrendous plan, to warn the people of the danger emanating from leaving the circle of struggle against Zionism. Today it is Palestine, tomorrow it will be one country or another. The Zionist plan is limitless. After Palestine, the Zionists aspire to expand from the Nile to the Euphrates. When they will have digested the region they overtook, they will aspire to further expansion and so on. Their plan is embodied in the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, and their present conduct is the best proof of what we are saying. Leaving the circle of struggle with Zionism is high treason, and cursed be he who does that. Now, we need to break down a few things from Article 32, but this is very important in understanding the way Hamas thinks. So Hamas views it as treason to leave the battle against the Jews. So. Egypt's Camp David Accords, Egypt no longer going to war against Israel, Hamas views Egypt as a traitor to the cause. This would also help us to understand that Hamas would view the Abraham Accords, that was the treaty signed in 2020 between Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain, basically normalizing relations between those three countries. Hamas would view that as traitorous. They would view that as completely antithetical to their goals in wiping out the Jews. If you also noticed in Article 32, Hamas believes the Zionists, meaning the Jews, are planning to conquer Palestine, then conquer the region of the Middle East, and basically conquer the world. And did you notice they mentioned a book called The Protocols of the Elders of Zion? The Protocols of the Elders of Zion is a fake book written by an anti-Semitic man named Hermann Getsch. This book purports to have chronicled the meeting of these Jewish rabbis as they plot to take over the world through the centuries. It's completely made up. It's anti-Semitic because, of course, it's saying that the Jews are, have a global conspiracy to destroy mankind, basically, and rule it. So Hamas is using a fake book written by an anti-Semitic man as their basis for understanding Jewish people around the world. Meaning, they believe that all Jewish people are involved in a conspiracy to take over the earth and basically rule mankind. Now, if you're Hamas and you believe that, and clearly Hamas does because they put that in their Islamic covenant, basically their founding document, then that's going to lead you to pursue a particular path if you believe that the Jews are planning global domination. So why would reading the Islamic covenant of Hamas, why would that be important for us? Because now we understand the mindset of Hamas. We understand why Hamas was created, what motivates them. Now, by the way, this also helps us understand the conflict and why Hamas would attack Israel on October 7th, because they view the Jews as evil and a group of people that need to be destroyed. This also helps us understand why Israel's plan is to take out Hamas. Because this Islamic covenant that we've read, trust me, everyone in Israel knows the Islamic covenant of Hamas and understands what is motivating Hamas. They kind of put up with Hamas for a while in the Gaza Strip, 
launching rockets into Israel. But after the October 7th attack, knowing how Hamas views Jews, Israel's plan is to get rid of Hamas because of what Hamas stands for and what its goals are. Again, I've linked the entire Islamic Covenant document of Hamas in the video notes below. I hope this helps you to better understand what's going on in the Middle East. We're going to focus in the next episodes on Intifada. What does that mean? There's a lot of groups in the U.S. and around the globe talking about Intifada, but what is the history of that word and what is its history in Israel? So, as per the usual, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them respectfully and politely in the description box below. I'm Mr. McGee. Take care.